What do you think happens when you give designers and engineers both a literal and figurative blank canvas? You get a passion project. It results in this. The fastest series production Audi ever created. The Audi RS e-tron GT. It is the first full electric GT car from Audi. It subscribes to that GT car ethos of being long, low, and wide. It offers comfort and performance. The beauty of the EV platform means that it's so modular that the designers could conceptualize a vehicle and then put that concept into production. What you see here is essentially what we saw in 2018 in the concept car. Close up the door and everything blends together and then you notice how the lines here over the doors, on the dashboard, up top here, all the lines and included angles replicate those used on the exterior and those quattro arches. This long consecutive line around here pushes the driver display further away. Everything's angled towards the driver. You've got a great range of motion in the seats, so you can get a low slung sort of commanding driving position, one that really makes you feel connected to the vehicle and able to do cross-country speeds. There's a range of luxury materials that you can choose from and you can even opt for a leather-free option if that's your bag. Then they'll use recycled materials to do everything from the carpets to the door cards to the seats, things like recycling plastic bottles. Of course, it's an EV and it's got high-end tech, so MMI system is geared around EV and you can search for charging stations, you can monitor your energy consumption, digital climate control, drive select, and of course this one is fitted with air suspension. And you've got varying modes and varying heights. It'll drop it by 22 millimeters to increase efficiency. It is high-tech, but with high-tech come a few problems and our iPad controller has stopped working. Okay, but what about the back? It wouldn't be a GT car if it couldn't accommodate four adults with two in the rear. And the RS GT does that rather nicely though. There's plenty of space back here and generous legroom. This is thanks to what Audi calls a foot garage. It's really just an indent there, but you can get your feet in underneath the backrests of the seats in front of you. The sport back roof line does encroach a little bit, but you've got plenty of headroom because of this panoramic glass roof. It doesn't have a shade, but it is crafted from heat reflective glass, so you're not going to get a crazy tan in the process. It's really generous. Shoulder room, leg room, it's really nice. Um, it's a little thin on tech. You only got air controls back here, no charging points. So I guess you just have to have a conversation with the rest of the people in the car as if it was 1980. You get 350 litres of boot space too, but that's in Europe. Here in South Africa, because our roads are so terrible, you get a space saver spare which eats into that. So as it turns out, it actually does have a bit of tech in the back. I found the USBs, but they're really tucked away under the seat here. Oh well, you live, you learn. But you don't want to be in the back there. Where you want to be is up front here. And more importantly, behind this wheel. It's not because the wheel feels good or anything. You want to be driving. So that's just for people that you think need religion. Because this is an absolute machine. When they say it is the most powerful series production Audi that they've ever made, they're not lying. 440 kilowatts, 830 newton meters. That's insane, it's nuts, it's like 660 odd horsepower. Trust me, you will find Jesus. Oh, you will. It is quattro, there is a motor on the front axle that provides 175 kilowatts, and then there's a more powerful motor on the rear axle, and that's gonna provide the balance with 335 kilowatts. Together, you get 440 kilowatts of power 
with 475 kilowatts thanks to the boost function. That boost function lasts for two and a half seconds, but it means that it accelerates like it's nobody's business. Trust me. Now power is sent to the wheels, believe it or not, through a gearbox. It's a two-speed gearbox, and the first gear gives you that crazy acceleration. The second gear is for efficiency. So, best of both worlds here. That's great. Then at the rear, you've got a clutch-type limited-slip diff. With the 335 kilowatts limited-slip diff, this feels like it's rear-wheel drive biased. You can transfer up to 100% power to either the front axle or the rear axle, depending on what's happening. You've always got amazing grip. Now we've got drive select here, which means that we can actually not only change the ride height, but change the three cell dampers that are in the air suspension. It's very technical. I don't quite follow how it works, but it does work quite nicely. I'm in dynamic mode here, so this is a little firm. You put it in efficiency mode, it actually drops about 22 millimeters to work on the aerodynamics. You want to drive it in dynamic mode because that boost function. Give me a moment. Okay. No, that's... People are going to write this off. People are going to write this car off. And it's not going to be the drivers that are going to write them off. It's going to be everybody that pulls out in front of you. Because we're not accustomed to having cars accelerate so fast or travel at these speeds. People are going to pull out in front of you and it's going to get ugly. Thankfully, there's a host of safety systems, so top-notch safety systems, you don't need to worry about it. And then there's the brakes. Yeah, they're big and they work. You get a choice of either steel brakes, carbid, carbide brakes, or the ones that we've got here, which are ceramic. And trust me, it checks this car up. But it has to, it's got a limited top speed of 250 kilometers an hour, and it'll do 0 to 100 in 3.3 seconds. 3.3 seconds. This exact model, this very car has actually been tested at 3.2, but shh. It is fast. This is a proper, it's a supercar. That's what it is. And then it handles, it handles beautifully despite its weight. 2,347 kilograms is the weight of this. 2,350 nearest makes no difference. Yet it is wonderfully sure-footed and the steering feels good, particularly here in dynamic mode. Actually rather twitchy. I have been accused of calling Audi vehicles sterile, characterless, anodyne. This is not one of them. This is an occasion. Each and every time you climb in, it's an occasion. Just for the sheer performance factor. It's not the bells and whistles and sort of, it's the styling's not bad, but it's not winning awards in my mind. It's, it's that. It's that. It's this. The corners. Yeah, this is proper. Sign me up. Sign me up. I've driven EV SUVs. Pretty much that's all we've had thrown at us. A hatchback here or there. But a nice big GT car Grand Tourer. Low slung, great driving position. With the performance to match. Yep, sign me up. The only problem, it's 3.3 million Rand. 3.3 million Rand for the Audi RS e-tron GT Quattro. 3.5 million if you want some of the nice goodies that we've got on you so it's not cheap but if you want the pinnacle of Audi development you're looking at it